We're just going to go over some of the basics of fractions. This is work you've done before, so what this is is a quick reminder of some of these ideas. So let's start with the number two-thirds. That's a fraction. Let's remember terminology. Two at the top of the fraction is called the numerator. Three at the bottom of the fraction is called the denominator. What does two-thirds mean? Well, it means that you have taken something, some whole unit, divided it into three equal pieces and taken two of them. So in this rectangle, we can see that, right? We have divided the rectangle into three pieces and we've taken two of them and colored them in. Similarly, on our number line, we can take that unit from zero to one, divide it into three pieces and take two of them. And so here at A is where two thirds sits on the number line, two pieces out of three. If we take this group of hearts, we can see two-thirds there by doing what we always do. We divide into one, two, three absolutely equal parts, and then we choose to take two of those equal parts. So that group of hearts here is two-thirds of the whole lot of hearts. Okay, check that you've got these basic ideas. In your homework book, you've got these pictures. And what I want you to do is shade in three tenths, two fifths, or nine twentieths of those rectangles. So pause the video and do it now. Okay, you should have had a picture something like this. For three tenths, you need to cut this rectangle up into ten equal pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of the same size. And then you take one, two, three of them. For the fifths, for two fifths, you need to cut the rectangle up into one, two, three, four, five pieces, and then you take two of those pieces. And for nine twentieths, well, the rectangle has already been cut up into these little pieces, and there are 20 of them, and then you need to color in nine of them, so that's four, eight, nine of them. So you'd have a picture something like that. If we want to know what this point A is on the number line, we can first look and see how many pieces has our unit, our gap between 0 and 1, the unit, been divided up into. And we can see it's been divided up into 1, 2, 3 pieces. So what we're dealing with here on the number line is thirds. How many thirds have we moved to when we get to A? Well, we've gone 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds. So A is four thirds. Now you should remember from last year that's an improper fraction and we can always turn an improper fraction into a mixed number. Let's remind ourselves how we do that. We say three divide into four. It goes one time with one remaining, right? So we've got one and one third. And we can see how that makes sense on the number line. There's the one and there's the one third. So four thirds is the same as one and one third. Now let's put a point there at B. Now that one we could see as being, we've gone one and one two thirds, right? So at point B, we're at one and two thirds. Let's remind ourselves how we turn that back into an improper fraction. Well, what we do, if you remember from last year, is we say one the whole number times three, right? Because that tells us how many thirds you've got here. And then we add on those two extra little thirds that we've got. So let's do that. We say that we have one times three, which is three, plus two, let me just do that slowly, one times three, which is three, plus two, which is five. So what we have is five thirds. And you should see one, two, three, four, five makes perfect sense in terms of what we can see on the number line. Okay, now I want you to just check you've got this right. So pause the video and try this in, the, in your um, homework books. I want you to turn 11 sixths into a mixed number. I want you to turn 2 and 1 sixths into an improper fraction. And I want to put you to show me where both of those two sit on the number line. Pause the video and try it now. Okay. Let's just check that you managed to get that. Let's start with this one, the 11 sixths, and we see where that is on the number line. 
Well, our number line has been divided up into sixths, right? So that makes it easy. So let's do 11 sixths. Well, we know there's six of them there, and then we need 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So our 11 sixths is going to sit over here on our number line. And what is that going to be as a mixed number? Well, I've got to say 6 goes into 11. It goes in once with 5 left over. So it's 1 and 5 sixths. And I can see that on the number line quite easily. I've got 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sixths, right? So 11, 6, 1 and 5, 6, the same thing. All right, what about 2 and 1 6? Well, to get to 2 and 1 6, I've got to go 2 and 1 more 6. So this is the point 2 and 1 6. Now, if I want to turn that into a, an improper fraction, I have to say 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 1, which is 13. So I get 13 over 6. And you should be able to see that, right? If you count here, you've got 6, 12, 13. You've got 13 sixths. The other important bit we dealt with last year was equivalent fractions. This means fractions that are just written in a different way, but mean exactly the same thing, are exactly the same number. So, for example, if you have a look at those little green, that green bit of this whole rectangle, one way you can talk about this is to say it's one, two, three, four pieces, right, out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So as a fraction, you can say, I've taken the rectangle, divided it into six pieces, and I've colored four of them in green. But if I actually rather just look at it, instead of concentrating on the black divisions, I look at those red divisions, I can then say, well, actually, this is exactly the same as thinking about taking the whole rectangle, dividing it into three pieces. In other words, I've got thirds. And how many of them have I colored in? I've just colored in two. So four sixths and two thirds are just the same way of talking about, ex I mean, four sixths and two thirds are just different ways of talking about exactly the same fraction. So these two fractions, four sixths and two thirds are equivalent. And you can see how we get from one fraction to the other. As long as we divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same number, or we multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same number, they stay equivalent, right? Four divided two is two, six divided two is three equivalent fractions. Let's do just another quick example on our number line here. Right, what is A? What are we talking about? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pieces we've divided up our unit into. So we're talking about eighths there. How far are we? We're at one, two, three, four, five, six. We have taken six out of eight pieces. So A is at six eighths. But again, if we just did this, we can think of then, what we've done is gone one, two, three, four pieces. So we're talking about quarters. And where is A? It is one, two, three along. So it's at three quarters. Six eighths, three quarters, exactly the same fraction, exactly the same number, just written in a different way. And we call these equivalent fractions. And we get equivalent fractions by multiplying or dividing the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing. Okay, let's just practice making equivalent fractions. We know that if we multiply or divide top and bottom of the fraction by the same thing, we get an equivalent fraction. So let's look at how we can get a whole lot of fractions that are equivalent to 3 quarters. Well, you know that to get from 4 to 8, you've multiplied by 2. So you must do exactly the same thing to the 3, and you'll get 6 eighths. And then what about here to get to the next one here, the 15? Well, you've multiplied the 3 by a 5. So your numerator has been multiplied by a 5. So the denominator must also be multiplied by 5. And 4 times 5 is 20. And then for our last fraction that's equivalent, well, to get from 4 to 4,000, you multiply it by 1,000. So you must multiply the 3 by 1,000 and you will get 3,000. So all these fractions are exactly the same number, just written in a slightly different way. And this will also help us when we want to simplify fractions, because a fraction like 35 over 30 is not in its simplest form. To simplify fractions, we just find an equivalent fraction which has got smaller numbers. So what can we do to 35 and 30? What number can divide into 35 and also into 30? Well, hopefully you easily see that it's 5. And as long as we do exactly the same 
divide the top and bottom by exactly the same number, we are making an equivalent fraction, a fraction that is exactly the same number. So 35 divided by 5 is 7, 30 divided by 5 is 6, and so 35 over 30 is exactly the same as 7 over 6, and we talk about 7 over 6 as being the fraction in its simplest form, because there's nothing further that we can divide into 7 that can also divide into 6. I want you to practice this quickly in your homework books. Write the answers to these two questions. Okay, did you get it? 40 divided 5 gets to 8, so you have to also then divide 25 by 5. And so, let's get a pen, 25 divided 5 is 5. Um, 7 times 3 gets you to 21, so you've also got to take the 4 and multiply it by 3, so you get a 12 at the bottom.